we go. The Hubble Space Telescope has gone into safe mode. So the orbiting telescope had two spontaneous shutdowns. This happened back in October. So NASA is hoping that the spacecraft will wake from its slumber to continue sending us images like these beautiful ones from the galaxy. Yeah, man. For more on what that means for this famous telescope and all the wild images that it brings to us, we turn to astronomer from the Franklin Institute, Derek Pitts. Derek, thank you for being with us. So for those at home who may not know, what does it mean when the Hubble telescope goes into safe mode? Is that like when you turn your cell phone on silent? What is this? Sleep, do not disturb. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> not exactly, although okay. it's close, okay. although it's close. Uh, it's as if, the, it's as if the, the, the telescope has been put to sleep because it's having some internal communications issues. Huh. There's something going on with some of the software in which some pieces of equipment are not communicating with each other. So safe mode means that it's just been sort of put to sleep while engineers figure out what's going on with it. Okay, so why wouldn't they just call it sleep mode? This is NASA. Why would you call it sleep mode? <laughs> it has to be more, you know, cool and smooth and okay, spacey. Okay. You know? So we get it. All right, I like that. You gotta you gotta beef it up a little yeah. bit, right? Hey, exactly. How, how exactly. often how often does the Hubble telescope go into sleep mode here? Is this like normal or is this something that's a little bit more unique? So while this doesn't happen often, it is something that's built into, you know, the operation of the spacecraft, and they do this. Uh, the telescope actually does it automatically when it comes across some kind of anomaly in how the equipment on board the telescope is talking to each other. And what this does is it protects the spacecraft against something really bad happening, like losing the data or falling out of orbit or any of those kinds of things until engineers can figure out what the problem is. So while it has only happened, you know, maybe maybe 10 times in the course of the 25 years it's been in operation. It's just a precaution to protect everything while they figure out what's happening. Okay, so we know that the telescope produces some really remarkable images uh, because yeah. we've all seen them, but we mm -hmm. want to know a little more about them. So here's our first image. It's called the Hourglass Nebula. We're going to put it up on the, on the mm. screen. Can you tell oh, yeah. us about this picture? Yeah, very cool. This is called a planetary nebula, and a planetary nebula is a cloud of gas and dust that sort of resembles the shape of a planet in a way exploded, blown off its outer layers of gases, and you can see them expanding away from each other as these sort of open-ended bubbles going in opposite directions. Very cool. It almost looks like an evil eye. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Or a space yeah. slinky yeah. or something. Yeah, all right. <laughs> right. We're, right. Re we're really adding an intellectual layer. Imagine to this. what you like. Yeah. Imagine what you like. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, what about this one? This one's called a, uh, a Cygnus loop. Yes, this is a supernova remnant. Now, this is sort of similar to what we saw before in that. It's what's left over after the explosion of a star. But in this case, what has happened is the gases that were once part of the star have blown out over a tremendous distance and look very long and wavy here. So it's what's left over, again, after a star explodes, just a different shape. Hmm. Okay, what's our analogy of that one, Nick? Oh, man, I don't know. That kind of looks like a ribbon. Just, you know... About... Our analogy of that one, Nick. Oh, man, I don't know. That kind of looks like a ribbon. Just, you know, a six-inch ribbon okay. on, a, on a Christmas present. Okay. There we so... go, yeah. I like that. Love it. Derek, this one, we are told, is a cat's eye nebula. Tell us about this, this one. This is a really cool yeah, one. Yeah, this is dope. Yeah, this is really great because this one is called an emission nebula, meaning that the gases that you see are glowing because the atoms of those gases are being excited by the extreme ultraviolet radiation pouring off of the star in the center. But here's the really cool thing. Several explosions of this star have occurred, and you can see the different bubbles of gas, and you can see the expanding gas fronts and the shock fronts from the explosion in those bubbles surrounding it. And you can also see, like right at the top, there's a jet of gas shooting off of the top and one shooting off of the bottom. So this is very, very complex, but... I think it's one of the best pictures we've ever seen of anything like this. Yeah, I would agree. That one, yeah. uh, that one definitely sticks out. All right, let's keep this thing going because this is cool. What about this Carina Nebula right here? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this Carina Nebula is called an absorption nebula. And what it means is that 
you have a cloud of gas and dust in the shape that we see. It sort of looked like a long-necked alien with weird antennas sticking out of the alien's head, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is very, very dense gas behind which are located a number of very bright, energetic stars. And what they're doing is the light and energy from those stars can't get through the dust, so it silhouettes the dust and gas from the radiation behind it. So this is really, really dense, but very cold gas, and the stars behind them are just trying to shine through. Sometimes the stars are even embedded in the clouds of dust and gas. Wow, that one looks very Oh, by the way, this thing is light years tall, I should tell you. Mm. It's incredible. Your descriptions are way better than ours, by the way, Derek. <laughs> so last but not least, we have here a Barnard Nebula. What's going on with this one? Right, so, uh, so this one, Barnard's Nebula, in this particular case, this is another example of a, a supernova remnant, I believe. No, 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 I'm sorry. This is a, re this is a reflection nebula in which you have a really, really hot gas source up in the top right uh, corner of the image blasting down onto this cloud of gas and dust. Now, here's a really cool thing. The radiation that's blasting down onto this cloud of gas and dust is actually shaping the cloud of gas and dust as well because the radiation is eroding the gas and dust away. So you see what the structure looks like on the surface. That's going to continue to change over the next several thousand years as the radiation continues to bombard it. All right, Derek Pitts, uh, you just blew our, you know yeah. what, some of those pics, the nebulas, that's what my mind looks like right now, just <laughs> blah. Uh, I would imagine as a kid, a lot of people in school probably wanted to sit next to you on test day. Would that be accurate? Uh, yeah, but it would cost you a little bit of money for that. Uh, <laughs> but in any case, these, these pictures, all these pictures can be found at a place called hubblesite.org, where we can go and look at all of the really fantastic images Hubble Space Telescope has collected over the years. They're really, like you say, just mind-blowing. All right, listen, listen, man, we've enjoyed talking to you. You're coming back. We're not going to let you not come back. Is that cool? Hey, thanks for having me. It's awesome. been great. All right, Derek Pitts with the Franklin Institute. Thanks for being here, and keep reaching for the stars.